Hey everybody, how y'all doing? So today I'm going to be talking about uh, <clears throat> why it is important for you not to follow your heart. And I know that may sound weird. And I'm not talking about you shouldn't follow whatever dream you have or whatever thing you want to pursue in life. I'm not saying that. When I speak about the heart, I'm talking about your feelings mainly. That's what I'm speaking about. Because those things are one and the same pretty much. Your heart will make you do so many things that you shouldn't do. And it's because your feelings are tied into your heart. Your feelings will make you marry a person. Because they look, because their looks sucked you in. A person's money. Can make you. Pursue them, causing your feelings to get mixed in with it because they buy you whatever you want. Not now, and that they just cater to your feelings. You like nice things, and they'll buy you whatever you want. So now you suck in with this person who got all of these problems. But they cater into your feelings. And your feelings tricking you. Making you believe that this is the person that you need to pursue. It's a lie. You feel like you following your heart. You feel like you done found the right one. Because he buy you whatever you want. Because she buy you whatever you want. Y'all, we cannot trust our feelings at all. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter uh, 17, verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's in the Old Testament for those of you who, who don't know. And over in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 19, it says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adul adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, which is lying, and blasphemies. Y'all have to understand that your heart is wicked. Most definitely if you're not following not after the things of God. If you're not practicing to be like Christ. If you're not practicing to be like Christ in all of your ways. Your heart is wicked. Your heart has to be trained to be proper. It has to be trained for positive things to proceed from it. That's why the Bible said, train up a child in the way they shall go and they will never depart from it. If you were not trained to follow after Christ, if you were not trained 
to be like Christ in all of your ways, if you are not trained to be gentle and patient and kind and merciful and unselfish, then your heart automatically is just law because it's written. It's just law. That the opposite of all of those things that I just mentioned will flow from you without you even realizing it. And I'm not speaking this, you know, and I always say this, I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody because I'm speaking from experience. I had no idea that this was true. I didn't know that I was selfish. I didn't know that I was, that I lacked patience. I didn't know that I really wasn't humble when I thought I was humble. It wasn't until, well, it wasn't really until it was exposed to me by my husband to me. And of course, I didn't believe it for a long time. But then when you watch a person who carry those characteristics, you'll see. When you get into those scriptures, when you start reading or, you know, studying. When you pay attention to the way Jesus was, you'll see that you're nothing like that. You're nothing like that. So how can you trust yourself? How can you trust your feelings? How can you trust your heart? When first, because it's written and and it tells you. And you'll know for yourself whether or not you were trained to be a certain way. So I'm just, I'm talking about this. And, you know, and I'm not just speaking to people who are following after God right now. I'm speaking to also sinners. Because before you get to the point of following after God, you have to understand that you have problems. You have to understand that your heart is wicked. You have to understand that just because you feel this way does not mean that it's okay for you to respond a certain way. Just because somebody hurts your feelings does not mean you can run off and go punch them in the face. But just because somebody says something to you this way doesn't mean that you have to have an attitude in response to it. Your heart is not right when you you act in in those ways. And it'll be tough to transform your heart. It's not impossible. It's written also in the word that God will give you a, a new heart. So it's possible. I don't know. I don't know where that scripture is, but I put it down in the description uh after I post this video. But y'all have to pay attention to yourselves. Y'all have to pay attention to your feelings. You can't get so caught up in your feelings that you allow somebody else to control how you act. And what I mean by that is and I have to Related to, you know, being in a relationship. Just because your husband or your wife says something to you a certain type of way does not mean or does not open up the door for you to act negatively. You have to build yourself up on positive things. So that you 
will believe that you can't trust your feelings. You cannot trust your heart. How can you trust in something that's not of God? And you have, I believe you have people who who are able to be more patient than others or be more humble than others. And it doesn't have to be because they know, you know, more things of God than you do. It can be just because they were trained that way. They were brought up around people who were like that. The Bible says, train up a child in the way they shall go and they will never depart from it. That's why. That's one of the main reasons why a child has to be trained. You have to train them to not be selfish. You have to train them to be gentle. And the easiest way to do that is by you displaying that to your to your children. How can how can we be mean and have an attitude and be aggressive and expect something different from our child? You can't. And it just all goes back to you being a slave to your feelings. Being a slave to your heart. It says it. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murders, adulteries, fornications. If I'm not mistaken, Jesus said that. So you have to pay attention to your feelings. How certain things make you feel and how you respond to it. My husband will say all the time to me, you need to get out your feelings. Why are you always in your feelings? You know, and I'd be like, I ain't, you know, I ain't in my feelings. When really you, I was in my feelings. Responding negatively to how my feelings felt. Or how my emotions, how I felt emotionally. Not, I'm not saying it's wrong for you to be emotional about things or have an emotion about something. But just the response to it. When you mad, just because something makes you mad you don't have to respond by punching somebody in the face you don't have to respond by arguing just because you something made you sad you don't have to go get in depressed mode you don't have to do that you have to have full control of your feelings, of your, of your emotions, full control of how you respond to your emotions.
not just to help yourself, but also to others. Because you just because you hurt, you don't want to go off and hurt somebody else by because you and your feelings and you trusting and responding off of evilness of your heart. How can you be gentle and kind and patient and humble How can you be that way when you can't when you can't respond positively to a negative emotion? You have to be in control of your of your your feelings in a response to your emotions. You have to be in control. You'll never be able to please God. You will never be able to please God if you cannot accept first that your heart is wicked. And then be able to change how you respond to those negative emotions you have to be able to you have to be able to do that to please god like i mentioned in the video before y'all we are here to please god and to make him happy This is one of the first steps to doing that. Accepting that you have a problem in your heart. And then moving forward to change it. You have to find out. Go search the scriptures for yourself. Go study for yourself. To figure out what it is. That God wants from you. What it is. That you have to do. To please him. A lot of people don't want to accept the fact that they have a problem in their heart. I didn't accept that for a long time. And for a long time, and not saying that I'm completely, you know, you know, I guess f delivered from that. But it's a work, you know, it's a it's work every single day. Yeah, but like I said, for a long time, I didn't want to accept that. And for a long time, I struggled with being offended, being angry inside, responding angrily to things that offended me or responding with an attitude to things that offended me because that's that's what came, that's what I felt. My feelings, I felt, I felt offended. I felt angry. I felt sad. So out of my heart proceeded bitterness, anger, attitude, negative attitude. We have to correct. Or first accept it and then work on correcting it. Trying to respond positive to the negative emotions that you feel. Just be honest with yourself.
Just be honest. That's the first step. step. Accept it. And just work on changing. Some of y'all have kids to raise. Some of y'all are raising kids. You don't want your kids to be like the negative you. So, I just want to just let y'all know to pay attention to yourself. Don't trust, don't trust your feelings. Don't always trust your heart. Because it can lead, trusting it can lead to destruction. It can lead to you never changing. When you get 30 years old, you'll be the same person with the same attitude that you had when you was 10, 15, 20 years old. You have to grow. As you get older, you have to grow. You have to mature mentally. You have to grow. And most importantly, you have to grow To please God. You have to. It's impossible to please him without growing. Without changing. So I think that's all for today. I hope all of that. hope all of it made sense. I hope for the ones who can relate. And for the ones who did understand, you just need to take heed and trust me. If you don't believe me, go study the scriptures for yourself and see if you will understand it. See if you will understand it when you go read it. You may or you you may, you may not. I'm just trying to deliver... A message to you that would help you even as a sinner and as a believer. My desire is that everybody, everybody join the faith. But if I can help you in the midst of your sin... To change when you trinkle over on the God side, you will already have that under your belt. So you won't have to go through as much battle with yourself when you're trying to pursue God and please Him. So y'all, please take heed. Don't trust your feelings. Don't always follow your heart. Because it's a liar. It's deceitful and it's wicked. Okay? So God loves y'all so much. Always remember that. Always keep God in your mind. He is your father. He is our father. What you going to do when you can't go to your, your parents or your aunties or your uncle? What you going to do? God is your father, y'all. Just always remember that. Take heed. Pay attention to yourself. Be better. Live with purpose. Be happy. Okay, so that's it, y'all. I hope it was helpful to... One or even many. 
Thank God I didn't wake my son up, y'all. Lord have mercy. If y'all will see, he'll be on the video with me probably sometime. I don't know, but he'll trip. <clears throat> but I hope y'all have a wonderful night or day whenever y'all see this. <clears throat> Just remember, God is your father and he loves you so much. Okay, bye-bye.